Hey everyone, it's Daniel here from InfoRest. Hope you're all doing well. So let's talk about the S&P 500. If you notice, since this year, the markets, especially NASDAQ, and yes, S&P a bit, have been rallying this year, has been doing well. People are like, where is this recession? And you see the S&P 500 11% away from all-time highs, which is really, really interesting here. Now, if you go back in history, like for example, in 2008, this will play the same way in 2008 where the S&P 500 was selling off, right? Before the big kaboom in 2008, and then it rallied up. And at, in May of 2008, S&P was about 8% away from the highs to just then completely turn over, collapse, make new lows. And September of 2008, that's when the true plunge happened, right? And it makes you think also today, right? Today being June, right? You, you see that the S&P 500, if you run the Fibonacci's around that 50% Fibonacci level, you see it 11% away from the highs. Everyone's talking about that, hey, the recession's gone. World Bank is saying that growth is going to be better. Things are going to be fine. What happened also when we heard about the bank crisis? That is that gone also? Well, it looks like it is, right? So everybody's in complacent and happy mode now. Now, is that the right way to look at the market? Should we be buying dips? Should we be, you know, chasing this market? Or is there something bigger that's going to come later on? Now, this is not financial advice. I'm not an investment advisor. Always consult with an investment advisor before making any investment and financial decisions. I'm just a guy on a YouTube with ideas. And just these are my views, what I think is happening. Now, another interesting data point here uh, comes out from a Twitter account uh, called Pomp. I'll, I'll link it in the description so you can check it out. It basically says here the financial return of the S&P 500 over the last six months dropped from 11% to zero if you remove these seven stocks. What are these seven stocks? Meta, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Tesla, and NVIDIA. So basically these seven stocks make up for the huge rally that we've seen in the S&P 500, right? And, and if you remove those, right? So that, if you put the S&P 500 together since um, December of last year, and you add these seven stocks, the S&P 500 has been up around 11%. And if you just measure these seven stocks and if you bought these seven stocks at the start of the year, you made about 53%. And if you removed those seven stocks from the S&P 500 and measure the S&P 500, the remaining 493 companies basically has a return of 0% for this year. So basically you have seven stocks moving the markets higher. That should be a red flag also. Right? That should be a red flag that, hey, these stocks are being driven by the recent AI hype. And yes, they've been hammered hard in the 2022 level, right? In 2022 times, uh, you did see Meta completely collapse when they messed up with the whole metaverse thing. But you see it completely reverse now. So, but is this a healthy sign, right? You see Apple make new highs, all-time highs. NVIDIA jumping into the trillion dollar mark. Is this a healthy sign? Again, I did a video on this also on my channel called The Melt Up. To me, this looks like and smells like and walks like and talks like the melt up scenario here. Just like in 2008, in May of 2008, the markets rallied. Everybody was like, hey, time to load up on stocks, get in, buy, buy, buy. There's no recession. Yeah, we had a little bit issues with the banking sector there. But guess what? You know, the Fed is now easing. They're cutting rates. You know, the banking crisis was just one small little heck hiccup. We're, there's no problem there. But then if you did that in May, you would have bought at literally the, the worst timing ever, 
right? And 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 then afterwards, on in September uh, of 08, you had the massive collapse. You would be massively, massively offside. Now, in retrospect, it's so easy to say that it's very hard to predict futures, and especially in today's time, right? Being June, not far away from May, and we've been rallying for about six months in the markets, being driven by seven main stocks makes you think, are we going to teeter here in September, play the same layout, and maybe September of this year, we might get the collapse or the November of this year, we might get the collapse in the S&P 500 or in the US equity markets, just like the same way in 2008. It'll be very interesting to see, right? But that's what you need for some sort of collapse to come is for people to be blindsided, to completely go from switch from shorting to going long. And and because everybody was so massively bearish last year in 2022, well, it makes it very hard to sell off. You need people to either completely not be bearish or be long, and then you can get the environment of that massive blowout that that drop that you tend to see in crashes and recessions so it'll be very interesting to monitor and see what happens it's going to be also very interesting to see how the data plays out in terms of growth and inflation and what breaks next the credit crunch etc etc commercial real estate the next bank failure if there is one we don't know exactly what what it's going to be but it'll be interesting to see what comes out in the next couple of months and see that hey do we get some sort of collapse do we not do we play along for another couple more months or is it going to be way way longer than we expected or am i just simply wrong I could be that, right? I could be simply wrong that this is a soft landing, which tends to be in my, again, looking at data and history, I think is a low probability chance, but I could just be simply wrong here also that, hey, we're getting a soft landing and we go to the moon. Time will tell. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below, subscribe, hit the like button, bell icon to be notified on the next video, and I'll see you guys around. Cheers. Bye.